Welcome back everyone. I want to quickly go through this personal first aid kit. Um, essentially designed by Nut and Fancy, improved upon by USN ER Doc, and I decided to make my own version uh, a couple of these kits simply just so I can have them in the car while I'm hiking or camping or just uh, out and about. And it's always useful to just have this just in case. Um, I've run into situations where it's kind of saved my skin already, even though I've only had it for about half a year now. Um, again, talking about depth versus breadth and weight versus firepower, um, this has enough wound closure capability, enough blood absorption to take care of a lot of major situations, especially if you are um, out in the wilderness on a hike or you're geocaching uh, or just going on a run and you give yourself a big scrape you aren't going to be carrying around this thing while going running. This thing is small enough to put in a small, yeah, fanny pack or something along that line. Or if you're just going hiking and you don't want to hoof all that weight, um, you know, this is a nice alternative to carrying this massive thing. And I'll talk about the weights later. But this thing's just in a simple freezer bag. Um, you can get better plastic bags, but this is all I had. So, breaking this up, we have some cohesive bandage, which is neat. It's uh, essentially uh, self-adhered only, not to skin, but only to itself. It's this sort of um, rubbery plastic material that can stretch. We have some plastic uh, micropore tape, antibiotic ointment, and a whole bunch of goodies in here. Um, let's see if I can get this all in camera. We have a sheet telling you everything that's in here right off the bat. That's good. We have a medis uh, medication pack, which essentially contains over-the-counter medications, um, some Tylenol, some ibuprofen, uh, some Benadryl, some medication for diarrhea and acid reflux. Um, note that I've specifically stated over-the-counter medication only. Um, I've stated the pack date and all the expiration dates that are relevant. Again, uh, you know, you have to kind of figure out your own system. Uh, I've put these in Ziploc baggies and broken up the blister packs. Um, really, this is, might be a little, que you know, legally questionable, but if you hurt yourself and then a police officer questions you, um, I, well, I definitely hope that they wouldn't arrest you simply because you prevented yourself from dying of a fever, but uh, then again, who knows? Um, make your own choice. Uh, we have two pairs, or four individual, nitrile gloves. Um, note in some of the other first aid kits we had vinyl gloves or latex gloves. The first kit had powdered vinyl gloves. Um, powdered gloves aren't that good because you might turn them inside out and get the powdering agent on the individual. Vinyl gloves, well, there are a lot of people with vinyl allergies now. Um, vinyl rubber... Uh, isn't necessarily the nicest thing either. It can tear easily um, or braid. Nitra has some better resistance to different things. Um, and as well, you might not need it for first aid, but uh, dealing with solvents or something else. Um, and you can just have it and be ready for it. It takes no way to add an extra two pairs of gloves. Why cheap out on it? We have um, two band-aid packages. Uh, I don't know why I have two. should only be one. But we have some... Uh, medium large, some medium bandages, a couple large bandages, and some small ones. I really don't want to go into this just to save time. I've got a nice assortment of bandages without carrying all this extra weight of, like, an entire box of them. Um, we have a pair of safety pins, a razor blade, and, like, six alcohol pads. Again, um, I have utility in the razor blade and the safety pins so I can, you know, pull out splinters, I can debride tissue, and I can sterilize wound sites and tools like this uh, razor blade um, without carrying all that extra weight. We have here the wound closure kit. This is probably something that most people won't carry, and I will uh, rearrange this order so I can address wound closure all at once now. Um, this is something that most people don't need to have and really shouldn't have. Um, Everyone should have band, uh, butterfly bandages or butterfly closures. Uh, they're cheap. They're good for just closing up wounds. Um, here we have Steri strips, which are essentially uh, they're developed by 3M. 
They're basically a fiber reinforced thin strip of medical tape that you can apply across a wound site or a large deep cut or laceration and essentially use it to hold the tissue together. And because of the length and the fact that they're fiber reinforced, they actually do quite well. Um, I have basically two larger packages and one smaller package. And the option of probably last resort here, uh, sutures. I must have ordered the wrong uh, suture because this is a, not a curved cutting needle, this is just a straight cutting needle. But regardless, um, suture material, last resort, if you are in some uh, really dire circumstances, um, you might need to use this if you can't get to medical attention fast enough. Um, know how to use this if you do have this in your kit. Don't carry this around just to look cool. If you have it, know how to use it. Um, practice it, you know, get a side of pork or something and have at it. Uh, be careful and learn. Get some advice from a nurse. I have people in the family that are in the medical field and I've been uh, essentially educated through that. Um, but also through a lot of practice and uh, additional reading. So respect this as a last resort option, but don't use it unless you absolutely need it because there's so many complications that could go wrong and you have liability that uh, it's almost not worth the risk. So again, make your own choice. So that's the wound closure aspect. Um, way more firepower and breadth in so little weight. It's incredible what you can pack into one little Ziploc bag. Um, the stair strips. Moleskin. This stuff is great if you're hiking, going long distances. Essentially it's an adhesive-backed felt. Some are adhesive-backed, foam-backed felt pads, so they have a layer of felt, then foam, then adhesive. Um, you just cut off a small section and apply it to a corn, or a pressure point, or a friction point, and it saves you a world of pain later, possibly blood blisters and other things like that. Um, you know, great to have, lightweight. Um, moving onwards, we have a uh, 3 mil, yeah, 3 milliliter syringe, and like an 18 gauge needle, I think it is. Yeah, 18 gauge needle. Um, this isn't for any sort of injection or IV. Uh, the needle has a couple purposes. You can use it to pull out splinters, um, just to remove them, uh, because of the very sharp point. And, uh, as well, you can attach the needle to the syringe and use it for wound irrigation if you have, uh, you know, a sterile water solution or just water solution. Especially if you're not austere conditions, you're not going to have a sterile condition whatsoever. Um, but again, a little bit of useful utility that you don't have in some of these other kits. Um, they're essentially made to patch up the small injuries and anything that's too big for them to handle, you call an ambulance. Uh, I only have about two minutes left and I don't want to run over, so moving on quickly. Lots of uh, non-adherent wound toppers and ten 4x4 gauze pads in a vacuum sealed package. Um, you have so much blood absorption and uh, non-adherent pad capability, you can cut off whatever you need, um, that you can stop a lot of bad situations from getting worse. And I even vacuum sealed a little Ziploc bag in here, so when you tear this open, there's a little notch here. Um, when you tear it open, you can use, you know, the one or two that you need, save the rest, and then, uh, you know, carry on, uh, on your hike or return for medical attention, um, and re reuse these, or just use them and continue to use them uh, for the rest of that trip to keep taking care of that wound. So you can see in this kit here, there is a ton of material available. You can close up almost any wound with the medical tape, with the stereo strips, and then take care of any blood loss. Uh, God forbid you have to resort to sutures. You have the gloves to protect yourself. You have the average everyday bandages for taking care of the small stuff. You have medication in case you get a fever while on a camping trip. Uh, you don't need to carry around ten different bottles. Diarrhea can happen on a camping trip from bad water. You can have bad food. You can have allergies. Um, all of these can be combated by this little plastic bag. All of these items, I think, hands down, beat this first aid kit and this big one here. Just to bring some weight into perspective in the last 15 seconds, all of this weighs about 6 ounces, where the others weigh 16 and 26 ounces. So you make the choice about depth versus breadth and weight versus firepower. 
Uh, thanks for watching this video, and if you liked it, please rate, subscribe, and comment. In another video also, I will give a more in-depth look at this level 1 first aid kit, as well as my treatment on the other two first aid kits and how I'm going to upgrade them.